God is good all the time. Amen, amen. Can we stand to our feet? Let's love God together right now. God Almighty, we love you so very much. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your goodness. Lord, I pray that you have your will and your way in this service. Help us, Lord, to be in tune with you, God. We give you praise. We give you glory. We're so grateful, Jesus. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord together. Amen, amen. not to spread germs and um, so hopefully we'll we'll say hello to them online Amen. and um, see them next Sunday Lord willing Amen. you know we're singing that song I love my Savior and I thought it's easy to love a God like we serve because he's good Amen. he's good he doesn't demand of us un, um, realistic things he loves us, and we can love him. We are going to look today in our Sunday School lesson, continuing in the book of Matthew, and we'll be looking at Matthew chapter 15. And we'll talk a little bit about the Pharisees. This lesson is called True Worship, 
And we'll look, uh, begin in verse 1 of chapter 15 of the book of Matthew. Then scribes and Pharisees who were from Jerusalem came to Jesus saying, Why do your disciples violate the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. But he answered them, Why do you also violate the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, Honor your father and mother, and he who speaks evil of father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever shall say to his father or his mother, What would you have profited from? What you would have profited from me is a gift to God. Will be free from honoring his father or his mother. So you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah well prophesied of you saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching As doctrines, the precepts of men. He called the crowds and said to them, Hear and understand. That which goes into the mouth does not defile a man, but that which comes out of the mouth, that defiles a man. Traditions. We all have them. Tradition is something that is handed down from one generation to another. We often think of traditions as things that happen around the holidays. My family, a tradition at the holidays is we make all kinds of candy, more than is necessary, more than is needed, and we just keep making more. And every year I think I'm going to put back, do a little less, and it's just hard to do. And my grandma used to, after we had dinner together and opened the presents and cleaned up everything, then she'd put out all the candy and the cookies, and she'd make this punch. So now my sisters and I were like, where's grandma's punch recipe? And so my sister, she brought all the stuff at Christmas this year, and we're tasting it. I said, well, it's not as sweet as grandma's, but you can, you know. So it's a tradition that we do. Traditions can be good. Traditions can be bad. But no tradition should go against the word of God. If we have a tradition and it goes against the word of God, then it's time maybe to let that tradition go away and pick up some new traditions, right? right? Jewish tradition placed a great deal of importance on the matter of hand washing. Now, I am not here to teach against hand washing. I believe in washing hands, okay? But, and it's it's healthy. We know that it's healthy, Um, We've learned that again and again. But their tradition was so specific and tied up in what they thought. And they made rules and ru- about rules. Yeah. And they missed the important things that the law was trying to teach them. Yeah. They, they had this law, Romans 8, which we've been studying on Wednesday nights. But I put it in because it says this so clearly. It says, um, Romans 8 and 3... For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. Our flesh is weak. It's hard to follow the law. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. I'm going to send this sinful flesh down there, but this flesh is not going to sin. He was without sin. And concerning sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. In order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. You can live for God because of the spirit of God. You cannot live for God because you're of your flesh. You cannot do it, but you can live for God because of his spirit. The Jewish leaders were trying to get others to conform to their thoughts and their rules about making it to heaven. Here was the Savior right in front of them who had the words to eternal life. The Messiah that they had heard about year after year after year. The Messiah that they had studied about. The Messiah that the prophets had spoke about over and over and over again. Here is the Messiah. 
And they can't see him because they've got this tradition in between them and their promise. John 6, 66 through 68, it said, From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. And Jesus said to the twelve, Do you also want to go away? And Simon Peter answered him and said, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The simple fisherman, as we taught a couple weeks ago, could understand that this Messiah was here. They didn't have all the traditions. They may not have been educated in the law. They may not have had all the training, but they could see this Messiah here. Surely they felt something in their spirit when he said, Come, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They must have felt something inside of them that compelled them to go. And he says, well, are you guys leaving me too? And Peter said, where are we going to go? Because you have the words to eternal life. The Lord desires his people that we have a love for the truth. Our traditions should help preserve truth and give glory to God. If we have a tradition of praying before we eat, then we should maintain that tradition of praying and giving thanks to God before we eat. That's a tradition that's not going against the word of God. If we have my family in our house, my husband and I, we have a tradition before we go on a trip, we're in the truck or whatever we're driving, and we stop and we pray. Before we ever leave, before we ever leave town, we stop and we pray. That's a tradition. That is a tradition that we started in our family years and years ago and that does not go against the, the, the um, word of God. We have a tradition that we get up and we go to church. It's a tradition that we have. Many of us have that tradition. Or we, um, and whenever we can't, we listen online. Sometimes, I'm not going to lie, sometimes on Sunday night, I'll listen to our home church a little bit. You know, doesn't, it doesn't hurt me to have somebody yeah. preach to me the word of God. Right. It doesn't hurt me right. to, to worship along with somebody else worshiping. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Jesus desires that we walk with him. The third um, book of John in verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Well, we've got the Pharisees, and they kind of got in trouble with Jesus. They transgressed the commandment of God. They had substituted their own traditions for truth. They went to great lengths to accuse Jesus and his disciples. In our text today, Jesus was teaching in Galilee. The Pharisees followed him from Jerusalem to Galilee to give him a few more accusations. It's amazing the lengths that people will go to to accuse someone sometimes, especially when it's fault. They were trying to build a case against him. According to their law, they could not put him to death. But according to Roman law, he could be put to death. So they had to build a case against Jesus so that they could take it to the Romans and let the Romans do what they couldn't do. Is that not twisting and and manipulating the law to make it say? That is so missing the point of Christianity. John 8, 41 to 44 says, You are doing the works of your father. He calls them out on it. They come accusing him, and he plain says, You're doing the works of your father. And they said, Oh, no, not us. We have one father, and he's God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and proceeded into the world. I did not come of my own authority, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speaking? They studied the law. They studied the law, but they couldn't understand it when it was right in front of them. He says, because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father, the devil. Now, I'm sure that made him real happy. Let's back off a little. He just called us sons of the devil. And you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth. Jesus knew what their intent was. 
He knew from the beginning because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Now, I'm not preaching, supposed to be preaching today. This is supposed to be a Sunday school lesson, but I'm just going to throw this one in here extra. If the devil talks to you, then you know it's a lie That's right. That's because right. he's a liar and the yep. father of liars, and he cannot speak the truth. And even if he says something that sounds a little bit true, he's mixed a tiny little bit of truth in with that lie to make you think it's true. Well, if I put one drop of poison in this water, it doesn't make this water fit to drink. So when the devil comes whispering in your ear, don't believe him. Take that little poison and toss it out. They replace, the Pharisees replace truth with tradition. They sought to kill Jesus for breaking the Sabbath traditions. They were oblivious to the purpose and meaning of the Sabbath. Yeah. What was the purpose of the Sabbath? To rest. Yeah. Then they got all this list of rules. Oh, but we, but, 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 but we got to do this, this, and this. In Mark chapter 2, verse 27, Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. This Sabbath was created so that you could have rest. Right. Not so that you could make a bunch of rules about the Sabbath. Right. And the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. The fact that the Pharisees wanted to take the life of Jesus shows how desperate they were to prove their points. In, they... Um, the scripture from Isaiah was being fulfilled in front of them. Isaiah 35, verse 4. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, Be strong, fear not. Your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then the lame shall leap as a deer, and the tongue of the mute shall sing for joy. For in the wilderness... Waters shall break out and streams in the desert. This was being fulfilled. Here was Jesus touching the blind, yep. healing the lame, yep. unloosing the tongue of the mute, raising the dead, unstopping the deaf ears. All of this was happening right. just like Isaiah had prophesied. Wilderness, water, water in the wilderness, streams in the desert. They were so legalistic in their approach to the law that they had missed the whole point. They were making the commandments worthless. In this time, right before the time of Jesus, there were two Pharisaical schools who it had interpretations of the law that they taught. The school of the Hillel and the school of Shammai. Hillel and Shammai were overseers of these two rabbinical schools just prior to Jesus' time. Hillel was considered to be the more liberal interpreter of the law, while Shammai was considered to be more traditional or more conservative. Paul's teacher, teacher Gamaliel was the grandson of Hillel. So we're talking of this time in history. You can read about that in Acts chapter 22, verse 3. But the origin of hand washing, this, all this talk about hand washing, came from the practice of many Jews who did not want to be ceremonially unclean. When they went into the temple, they had to wash at the laver in the tabernacle before they could enter. That was what Jesus had, God had told them. When you get in, you wash. But they had added this other stuff about hand washing on top of it. His the, the, the um, approach to God with washing in the laver was one thing, but adding the hand washing was their own rules. There was no commandment in the law given from the Lord about hand washing. That was only the interpretation of the rabbis. But all of the Jews, both of those Pharisaical schools, as well as the Sadducees, which was another group, all of them shared that belief about hand washing. Pharisees, Jesus revealed their motives. He said, you're drawn near to me with your mouth, but your heart is far from me. 
Have you ever had somebody say something to you that you didn't think was sincere? They say one thing to your face, but you know that they're not saying that behind your back. Yeah. If, I hope you've never been in that situation. But I have before, and I don't like that feeling. When somebody's looking at me, telling me what a wonderful job I am, do, am doing and how great I am, and then they're talking to other people different stuff about me. Right. And then that's not a good feeling. Their mouth is saying one thing, but their heart is saying something else. And that's what Jesus said these Pharisees were doing. In Isaiah 19, he prophesied that this would happen. Verse 13, it says, Therefore the Lord said, Because this people draws near with their mouths and honors me with their lips, but they have removed their hearts far from me. And their fear toward me is tradition by the precept of men. That was Isaiah 19 and 13. If we can stick it up there. So Jesus condemned the Pharisees for their reliance on their own human ideas and traditions. Drawing close to God involves both spoken and unspoken worship. Drawing close to God involves not only what we say, but what we think or what we meditate on. Right. Now that word meditate, sometimes we can get mixed up with, with um, you know, other practices, non-Christian practices of meditation. But meditation means what you think about, what you dwell on, what your thoughts dwell on. And so if we must let our thoughts dwell on Jesus. That's what David talks about in the scripture. He meditates on the Lord. He meditates on the scriptures. When, if we are going to draw near to him, we draw near to him with our words, but also with our hearts. Right. We can sit in church and we can go through the motions and our heart and our mind be someplace completely different. Yeah. We must put our heart on Jesus too. The Pharisees honored God with their lips. In the passage of scripture that we read in our text, they talked today about how people would um, give a gift instead of taking care of their parents. And um, the, if you'll turn back, Matthew, to 15 and 4 in our text. I'm sorry I didn't put it back down there. God commanded saying, honor your father and mother. And if you curse your father and mother, let, him, let you die. And he says, but you said, whosoever shall say to his father or mother, it is a gift, then you, then, then um, you, I don't have to take care of you. So the way that this was explained is what was happening is there was no social security and there was no pension and retirement money. And so with who took care of the parents and the widows and the elderly? The children did. And so what was happening was the children didn't want to take care of their parents, and so they'd say, well, I gave that as a gift to the temple, or I gave that as a gift, therefore I don't have to take care of you because I gave this as a gift. And Jesus is like, whoa, wait just a minute here. Wait just a minute here. The commandment is to honor your parents. You can't, like, give to God and say, okay, I'm not going to honor my parents. Because... And let me just say right here that God's not going to tell you to do something that goes against Scripture. Right. He, throughout Scripture, it says he that doesn't, it talks about providing for your own house. And if you don't provide for your own house, then you're worse than an infidel. You, some, that's a, a non-believer, a non-Christian, somebody who doesn't understand. And so they were twisting this around. So they could make it what they wanted it to be. And they were thinking they honored their parents, but yet they weren't taking care of them. Yeah. And that goes against the principle of the law. Now i got my notes all mixed up. God knows the intents of our heart. Honor is more than spoken words. What really matters is action. God sees beyond the words that we speak, and he sees the thoughts and intents of our heart. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12, it says, For the word of God is alive and active. In the King James, it says, Quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and of the spirit and of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. 
Jesus, he cut right down to the chase. The Pharisees, they looked good. They, they were doing all the right things, it seemed like. But Jesus said, your heart is not in it. The heart of the Pharisees was far from God. But you know, Jesus had, or God had promised, had prophesied through the prophets that he would give a new heart. Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 19 and 20 says, I will give them one heart and I will put a new spirit within them and I will take the stony heart out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes and keep my ordinances and do them. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God. The new heart desires to please God. When we come to God, he gives us, if we, if God deals with our hearts. Maybe, maybe, maybe um, we've lived for God for a long time. But I'm here to tell you, I received the Holy Ghost when I was nine years old. I'm 52 years old now. God still deals with my heart. Sometimes my attitude needs to do a little check-in. Sometimes I get a little off track and God still deals with my heart, right? Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe it's just me. I think not. But God deals with our heart. And if we have a heart that is tuned to him, when he says, you know, maybe you should uh, rethink how you say that, Maybe you should uh, rethink that grouchy attitude that you got going on. Maybe you should rethink that I need to listen to him. Right. Because that's why he gave me that heart of flesh, so I could be sensitive to his spirit and do what he wants me to do. Right. The ending scripture today is the same one that I preached about last week, but it's 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Look, or behold, all things have become new. Right. When you came to Jesus, was there a difference in your life? Amen? Amen? Jesus came to fulfill the law. The traditions of the Pharisees consumed their devotion. They had a list, and they were checking the list. And they weren't only checking the list for them, they were checking the list for Everybody else, too, making sure that, you know, I got this list. I want to make sure you're doing this list. They were checking it off, and it got to where it was consuming their devotion instead of honoring God. The true issues of life come from our heart. Out of an evil, unwashed heart comes the things that defile us. We must keep our heart with all diligence, it says in the Bible, for out of it is, are the issues of life. True worship comes from the heart. The outward manifestations are important. But outward should not be our focus first. The first should be the inward. If we get our heart right with God, if we get this right, then this is going to be right. Amen? Amen. we got to get our heart right with God because that's where true worship comes from. Okay. Um, I have one announcement, uh, Matthew, I think there's a slide up there. Our annual church business meeting is the last Tuesday of the month at 7 o'clock. Um, if you have new business, please um, take that to my husband ahead of time so that you can discuss that with him and put it on the agenda for the business meeting. 